What's up, everybody? Welcome to the How to Vegan podcast. I'm your host, Kristen Emily, and in today's episode, we are going to be diving real deep into my vegan story. So this is just episode two of this podcast. If you haven't listened to episode one yet, go check that out. But yeah, like I said, today we're just going to be talking all about my vegan story, kind of how I got to where I am today, my thoughts on health and all that st stuff growing up, how I became vegan, why I'm still vegan, and what I'm doing to kind of be a vegan activist how and when I can. So that's pretty much what today's episode is going to be all about. If you're interested in learning more about me, the host of the How to Vegan podcast, then this episode is going to be a good one for you. Uh, if you guys are liking what you're hearing so far, then please make sure to go to iTunes and subscribe to this podcast. And it's also really, really helpful if you leave a review and a rating in iTunes as well. It helps kind of push the podcast up, more people see it, which is kind of the point. So that would be really awesome if you guys could go and do that as well. So yeah, let's just kind of dive right into today's episode. I'm going to be talking a lot about myself. So uh, yeah, let's let's just get right into it. So so kind of starting back when I was younger, because I kind of feel like that's where everything kind of starts um, as far as health and body image and all that stuff goes. When I was younger, I mean, I remember really thinking about what my body looked like and comparing it to other women's bodies or girls' bodies or whatever it was at the time and just feeling like I didn't like the way I looked and I was unhealthy and I was bigger than everybody. And looking back, I, I definitely wasn't. But it's, you know, my views on my health and my body when I was a younger girl and a teenager were not the best. Um, I remember trying to diet and I remember just, you know, really going through some struggles trying to figure out what is healthy, how to be healthy, and how to make it work for me. And that was pretty much, I from the time I can remember, like in early elementary school, all the way, you know, through my teens, all of that, early 20s even. Um, it just wasn't the best mindset possible. I, looking back, really wish I could change some of the stuff, but you can't. I, you know, I was really bullied a lot. I'm pretty tall, so I, and I was a lot taller than everybody growing up, and I'm not a super skinny human, so I think that just that combination was really hard for me to kind of find my way and feel comfortable. Uh, so, yeah, I pretty much grew up thinking that I hated my body and that there was no way that I was ever going to love my body. Fast forward to college, uh, pretty much the same thing. So as soon as I graduated high school, I moved to Boise and attended Boise State University. Uh, and by the time I went home, after my first semester, I literally think I had gained 30 pounds. I think it's normally like the freshman 15. It was like the freshman 20 or 25 or 30 for me, uh, which was not good. I did not need to be putting on any weight, but I played basketball like all throughout high school. And so I was always working out doing that. And so, you know, moving to Boise, being on my own, living in the dorms, having all the food possible that I wanted uh, available for me in, you know, all around me in the dorm and in the cafeteria. And then there's endless amounts of fast food uh, places around the university as well. So I just was really surrounded by unhealthiness uh, and I gained a lot of weight and I felt really, really uncomfortable with myself. I, it was the biggest I've ever been and I just like, I just was really unhappy. I, again, I mean, I was still working out. I went to like the gym at BSU and I was trying to be healthy and I remember like going to the cafeteria and like trying to be healthy, like getting a chicken Caesar salad and thinking that that was a healthy option and then finishing off with like a bowl of cereal and an ice cream cone at the end and then wondering why I was gaining so much weight. I also got really sick that year. I had like one of the worst colds in my life and I just, I just didn't, I just was laying around a lot. I just was being lazy. So I gained a lot of weight and that was not my favorite time in my life, but it was another learning experience. So up up until this point, up until like the end of college, uh, I'm really just not loving my life. I, I remember dieting all the time, trying to figure out what I needed to do to lose weight. I hated exercising. I loved food and I didn't want to eat small portions. So I just was in that like very, you know, real hard 
place that a lot of people get stuck in. And then I met my amazing, wonderful friend, Sarah, who just so happens to be vegetarian. She had been vegetarian since she was in high school. Uh, she's a few years younger than me, but she introduced me to vegetarianism. And I don't know why I had never made the connection that what I was eating was a dead animal. When every time I ate meat, I just had never made that connection because I am a huge, like absolutely huge animal lover. And when she talked about why she was vegetarian and all of this stuff and made, started making these connections that, you know, that was a dead animal and I don't want to eat that, I went vegetarian. And I did that for like six months and I felt amazing. I weight started kind of slowly coming off of me and I started kind of exercising at the same time and just kind of regaining my health back, kind of kind of focusing on it in a different way, in a different light, which was really, really exciting and new and awesome for me. So I transitioned to vegetarian, um, which was awesome because again, I always loved animals. So this was starting to feel like a step in the right direction for me. Uh, and that was going really, really well. And then in October of 2011, uh, I was dating this guy, kind of, he's currently now my boyfriend, fiance, actually, uh, but yeah, we were kind of like dating, hanging out, it wasn't super, super serious, he had started eating vegetarian as well, because him and Sarah were friends too, so he was kind of in that loop, and he really liked me, so he was kind of rolling with it, and then uh, I had him over one night, uh, and we watched Forks Over Knives on Netflix, and that is when everything changed. My whole life changed. Forks Over Knives is the reason I went vegan and I, you know, all of the health benefits, the environmental benefits and the ethical reasons for going vegan just were hitting such a chord with me and I just knew there was no looking back. So from that day forward, October 5th, 2011, I have been vegan and Casey uh, went vegan that exact same day as well. He was like, if you're going vegan, then I'm going vegan because I want to support you. So we kind of use that date as like our anniversary as well because, uh, yeah, it just was a really, you know, a really memorable time for both of us to, you know, to kind of make such a big decision together and then to have stuck with it for, for so long. This is where the unedited version on YouTube is really entertaining because you get to see my cat jump up on here and then I get to spray him. Lucky! <laughs> He will not get off the table unless I do that. So anyway, okay. Um, so it was just a really amazing time in my life, but also really terrifying because it was like, what am I doing now? Like I'm vegan all of a sudden, what am I doing? Where do I go from here? I don't know what I'm doing at all. Back then, I didn't know anybody else who was vegan, at least not that I knew right away. So I was just really like, okay, you know, my family was like, what's going on? And it was right before the holiday season. And I, you know, if you're a new vegan or an aspiring vegan, I'm not saying going vegan is going to be easy right away. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier than it was uh, five or six years ago, but there is going to be some transition time. So that was, that was like that, that fall for me was transitioning into veganism and pretty much immediately I lost like another 20 pounds. Like it just kind of like melted off of me. I didn't change anything else. Uh, and that was amazing because I did need to lose some weight. There was some weight that I was holding onto that I just felt uncomfortable with. So that was another huge benefit for me. So not only was I helping animals that I did not want to harm anymore, you know, once I made the connection that dairy is awful for you and that to, in order to get the dairy on our plates or in our cups or in our bowls or whatever it is, uh, there's a lot of torture that happens to these animals and I just don't want to be a part of it at all. And we will be diving into that in the next episode, kind of the top three reasons why people go vegan. So we'll be talking about the environmental reasons, the ethical reasons, and then the health reasons. Uh, so make sure to tune into episode three so you can kind of hear all about that. But once I made that connection, I just knew there was no looking back. So went vegan, never looked back been vegan ever since. Uh, it's going to be six years this October 5th, so 2017. So I'm really excited about it. It's been the most amazing, best decision. It's the best thing I've ever done in my entire life. I am so happy that I went vegan and I just wish I would have done it sooner. So 
that's all I can say about that uh, is if you're thinking about it try it out because you might wish that you would have done it sooner because that's how I feel so that's how I went vegan it's not this like huge long complicated story I literally watched a movie and then just like dove into the education I went to the library and I checked out a shit ton of vegan books and cookbooks and I just learned as much as I could and I found blogs and I found websites and I just immersed myself in it and I just was just obsessed with everything vegan and I loved cooking again I had kind of fallen off loving cooking and I felt creative in the kitchen and I was making these delicious meals that all my friends were loving and they were healthy and good for the environment and not harming any animals and it was amazing so that was kind of the start of my vegan journey but I was still working in the service industry um, at the time I was working at a fish restaurant uh, so that was not ideal uh, and but then after that I got two, a couple other jobs working downtown Boise at some pretty prominent restaurants which definitely serve meat and definitely serve dairy so I, I felt kind of stuck although you know I was making good money at these jobs and it wasn't bothering me too much because I wasn't eating it and these people were going to be eating it anyway but it eventually got to the point where I just couldn't do it anymore so this was maybe three years after I went vegan uh, I just was like I can't serve me anymore I can't do it I don't feel good about it at all so I you know I remember feeling so lost and so confused and so helpless and really just like needing an answer because I just didn't know what to do with my life I have a teaching degree I taught for a little bit and I just didn't love it it wasn't for me it was too restricting and I couldn't do my own thing enough and it just wasn't the right thing for me so I just again I mean I have this degree I've been serving and bartending and managing restaurants for a long time and now what what do I do to get this veganism into something that I can do to make a difference and possibly make a career out of it so I went outside one night I sat down on my little stoop I literally looked up at the stars I was not very spiritual at this time at all and I was like can you just send me a sign or help me please I feel really lost <laughs> and I had never really I mean I don't really like I never really done that before so this was like something like a cry for help like please help me I need it the next morning I woke up and I had an email in my inbox from the amazing Chris Carr and it was all about the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and how amazing the program was and how if she could start all over again she would do it so I clicked on the email I signed up for some notifications from the school and as soon as I got like my sample class and my sample curriculum and all that stuff I was like I'm doing this and I called someone I figured it out I you know they do payment plans and then I was just like I, I'm on it I just knew immediately that that was where I was going was I was going to attend IIN and I was going to become a health coach uh, so that's kind of that next step I started IIN and so I was transitioning into doing some some more real kind of meaningful work I really wanted to help other people get healthier and kind of change their lives how I did so I enrolled in IIN and I started classes and oh my god I loved it I loved it I loved it I loved it I love learning and learning about this kind of stuff was just amazing so dove right into that but then about you know halfway through my program it's a year-long program I just could not like could not serve me anymore to people and feel good about it I just felt really like I was doing something completely wrong so I quit my job as a bar manager at this awesome bar downtown and I got a job at a little uh, like vegetarian cafe restaurant thing uh, kind of off the beaten path it's unfortunately no longer open but I just needed to do something to get myself out of the situation I was in serving meat to people so that was amazing I definitely took a large pay cut doing that but I just needed to do it so I was in IIN and I was working at this little vegetarian restaurant and feeling a lot better about myself feeling like I was definitely on the right path um, and and then I started my business so as soon as I graduated graduated IIN I started my business as a health coach and I just started out as like a general health and wellness coach from the beginning so I just was taking clients any kind of client they didn't need to want to be vegan they didn't just kind of if they wanted to be healthier in any sort of capacity and they wanted to work with me I was down um, I keep thinking my cat's chewing on cords so yeah anyway um 
So I, I, yeah, I was just kind of taking all kinds of clients, anybody who wanted to work with me, because again, starting your business out is kind of terrifying and you are just like, I need to make some money. And so I started taking some clients and I got a few clients right off the bat, which was awesome. So I quit my job uh, at the vegetarian restaurant and I was like, I'm just going to do this full time. I think this is exactly what I need to do. Monkey, don't chew on that cord. <laughs> um, see, these unedited ones on YouTube are really entertaining. Okay. Um, so I quit my job at Kind and I just really focused on doing this health coaching. And it was awesome. I mean, I loved starting my own business. It was a ton of work and a lot to do and really overwhelming and oh my god crazy at times but I really really enjoyed it a lot so I was taking you know even omnivores any types of clients which was great but then like spring of last year so about a year and a half into it uh no not even so about six months into it into my health coaching business. I was just taking clients out of my home, uh, just trying to make it work as I could. And in about six months into it, I was like, I can't see clients who want to eat meat anymore. Kind of the same thing that happened with me with like the serving and bartending, all of that. I was like, I can't do it anymore. I couldn't like look up recipes, even if they were healthy recipes for them that included like meat and dairy and stuff like that. And I tried and I really did it. And I, I mean, I did it for those clients who were working with me, but I just was like, I'm not doing this anymore. So then I was like, I'm only gonna take clients who wanna go vegan or who already are vegan and wanna be healthier or some something along those lines. But I'm not gonna be working with someone who wants to include meat and dairy in, as a part of their diet. Um, it's just not what I'm about and it just wasn't flowing with me. So stopped doing that. So then I just started taking clients who strictly, you know, either wanted to go vegan or were vegan already and just needed some help meal planning, prepping with the nutrient, the nutritional stuff, all of, all of that. So that was amazing. And, and I started really lining up with clients who fit me more, who kind of fit my vibe, fit my flow. And it just was, oh, Ever since I did that, it has been amazing. So since September, no, not September, since um, spring of 2016, I have been only taking clients who are vegan or want to go vegan or who are vegan for the most part and kind of whatever, um, but who are, they're striving, that's their goal. They want to be vegan and they want to do it in a healthy, practical, fun, delicious, affordable way. So that's what I do. I help clients, uh, I help human beings uh, go vegan or stay vegan and do it in a way that feels good for them. So that's kind of how I got into this health coaching realm and kind of my whole story behind all of that. Uh, and then, so I'm, I'm health coaching, I'm, I'm doing this vegan thing and I'm really loving it, but something about just doing one-on-one -on -one was also making me feel like, ah, I'm not helping enough people. I have all this knowledge and all this passion and all this excitement for veganism and for just the whole movement and I'm helping one person at a time which is great because then they're spreading it to their families and all of that but like I just really need to help as many people as possible that I just know that that is exactly why I was put on this earth. I know without a doubt I was put here by whomever, the universe, whatevs, to spread veganism and to spread the vegan movement because there are so many reasons to go vegan and so many positive reasons to go vegan. Uh, again, we're going to be talking all about that in the next episode, so make sure to listen to episode three after you're done with this one, but I, I just, I know, I, if I don't do that, I feel like I'm not doing something I'm supposed to. So yeah, I then decided to kind of take a leap and start a YouTube channel and a Facebook group. So that was October of 2016. So about a year ago, I started a channel on YouTube and I started my How to Vegan group on Facebook. And it has been amazing. My Facebook group has over 70,000 members, which is completely mind blowing to me. I don't even know what that means. Uh, so many human beings and it's growing quickly and it's a blast. So that grew really, really quickly. So that's been taking up a lot of my time over the past year. Same with my YouTube channel. I had never edited, never shot videos. I don't really like being on video or the center of attention or lots of people looking at me, but I was like, I want to help people go vegan. If I can help save one animal or one person or help the planet a little bit, then it is worth it to me. So I'm like, okay, 
hit record on this camera put yourself out there if you can help people go vegan then that is what you're supposed to do so my group's been amazing my youtube channel has been a blast i actually love being on video now i love it uh, it's so much fun recording videos and just sharing with people and just engaging with people all over the world. So not only only am I helping people within my community, but I'm also helping people all over the world, which is exactly what I want to do. So I really feel like I'm on this path that is right for me. So I really feel like I'm on this path that is right for me. And... It feels really really good and I know that good things are coming and I'm really trying to enjoy the process which can be kind of difficult sometimes but I am really working on enjoying the process and and enjoying the failures as much as the successes because it's all part of it especially when you're an entrepreneur and starting your own business and you have no idea when the hell you're doing you have to enjoy the process same with going vegan you have to enjoy the process and everybody's different some people go vegan right away which is what I did most people need some time to transition so enjoy your journey so enjoy your journey this is nobody else's journey this is your journey so so remember that keep that in mind and enjoy the process make the little things the little parts of your vegan transition the each you know each meal you make or each recipe you try that's delicious make those the things that make you happy and don't focus so much on the big long-term goals focus on those daily successes and those daily happy happinesses and and that will get you there in a way that feels better than beating yourself up for not being so perfect all the time, which that's not what life is about. Nobody wants to be perfect. It's boring. So, so now here I am starting this podcast and that's where I am at now. It's 2017. It's October. Well, it's currently September of 2017. Uh, but yeah, it's fall time. It's my favorite time of year. I'm putting out a podcast and I'm super stoked about it. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of my, my battery died on my camera. So that's why there's a little cut there in that, in there. But anyway, um, okay. So that's pretty much how I got to where I am now. Uh, I hope that wasn't too boring, but I just know that if I'm listening to somebody talking or if I'm diving into, you know, listening to a podcast or a YouTube channel or visiting someone's website, I always click on their about me page because I want to know who they are. I want to know what they're doing. I want to know why they're doing this. Uh, so that's kind of my, this is kind of my like about me page, uh, kind of a little bit more about who I am, my views on things and where I got to, um, and, and how I got to where I am today. So I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me talk about myself. Hope it wasn't too boring. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. <sighs> I'm still new to this and it seems weird to me to be doing this, but, um, so thank you guys for listening to this episode again in next, in the next episode, we are going to be talking about the top three reasons why people go vegan. So it's going to be a really good episode. So make sure to tune into that, uh, for sure. Uh, if you guys have listened this far and you like what you are hearing again, please go subscribe to this podcast in iTunes, share this with your friends and family, and then make sure to leave a good review and rating in iTunes as well. It's awesome because it helps more people see the podcast and I really would appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. Um, there also is an unedited version of this podcast on the How to Vegan podcast channel. Um, or on the How to Vegan podcast YouTube channel. So make sure to go check those out because they're completely unedited. I just hit record and then whatever happens, happens. So if you're into video or if you are already on YouTube and that's another way you want to consume this content, I do have a YouTube channel, How to Vegan podcast. Go check that out. Unedited versions of all of the podcasts are going to be up there for your enjoyment. Uh, any links that I mentioned or anything uh, in this episode will definitely be in this show's uh, or in this episode's show notes. So check those out as well. Join my How to Vegan group if you're not a member of that and check out my YouTube channel too because I have a ton of awesome stuff on there so far and it's just growing. I'm loving making videos. So go check that out for sure. And yeah, thanks again for listening to my vegan story. Uh, you guys are awesome and uh, 
yeah, I will just catch you guys in the next episode of the How to Vegan podcast. Peace out.